Hello, my name is Shalanda Chaudhary and in this video, I'll be explaining about Azure Virtual Network NAT. Let's start with a scenario where company A has few web applications running on virtual machines. All these virtual machines are part of the private subnet, as you can see on your screen, which means they don't have a public IP assigned. However, by default, all the virtual machines can connect to internet even they don't have a public IP assigned. There is no restriction on the outbound connection by default. There is another company B which has API server, server running in their environment. Now web application of the company A wants to connect to the API server of company B, which can be possible if there is no restriction on inbound traffic. But in this case, company B has a firewall set up to filter the inbound connection. To allow the connection, company B has to add the public IP of the company A as the trusted source in their firewall. Problem here is that outbound IPs are picked up randomly from the pool of Azure public IPs, which makes it more difficult to add to the firewall. So now there are two options uh, to overcome this challenge. First one is to use Azure Firewall or the Virtual Network Appliance, as you can see here. Azure Firewall and the Network Virtual Appliance use the public IP and they control the outbound connections. This option is complex, but it's preferred in the case of medium and the large organizations. However, for the small organization, this can be an overhead solution. Second option is to use Azure Managed Service, which is NAT Gateway, which is easy to set up and easy to use. And it will use the static public IP for all the outbound connections. And by this way, company B can add the NAT Gateway public IP into the firewall and then the connection can happen from the private subnet of company A to the company B. Let's discuss what is NAT Gateway. NAT Gateway is a fully managed network address translation service, which means private IP of the virtual machines will be converted to the static public IP address for all the outbound internet connection for that particular virtual network. NAT is a regional service and is deployed as a non-zonal by default. Multiple virtual networks can't use the same NAT. However, the multiple subnets in the same virtual network can use a single NAT. TCP and UDP protocols are both supported in the NAT. NAT gateway can be used for both public IP and the public IP prefix. Public IP prefix is assigning the particular range so that continuous public IPs can be provided. And NAT gateway is compatible only with the standard SKU of the public IP address. So let's talk about the NAT gateway pricing. I am currently located in Australia. So I've taken the location as Australia East and the currency in Australian dollar. There are hourly charges for running the NAT gateway along with how much data is being processed, as you can see on your screen. Along with this, we use the public IP, static public IP. So there are charges for the public IP too. So this is the total charge which has to be paid for using the NAT gateway. Still, these charges are very reasonable as compared to maintaining and running a firewall. Let's explain NAT Gateway with the demo. I'll first create a virtual network and then create two private subnets in it. Uh, further, two VMs will be created, one in each subnet. So I'll use the Bastion service to log into those VMs. As you are aware, by default, all the outbound connection to the internet are allowed. So random outbound public IP will show when we open the website, what is myip.com. Now to make the IP static for all the VMs in a particular subnet, I'll create a NAT gateway and associate it with one subnet. So let's start creating the resources. Let's find virtual network. Create a virtual network. Create a new resource group, demo RG. And the name of virtual network will be demo vnet. I'll choose the location as Australia East. And it's taking by default as 10.0.0 slash 16, which is okay. Let's create two subnets. Demo subnet one. and assign the range as CIDR24. Initially, we'll not assign any NAT gateway. 
another subnet will be demo subnet two so i have created two private subnets one is demo subnet 1 and demo subnet 2 let's enable the best in service let's name it as demo best in and assign a subnet address range create a new public ip address demo best in no tags are required review and create and create the resource let's wait for the resources to be created it took few minutes and now the resources are created let's go to the virtual network and see the subnets which are created now we can see there are three subnets Two are the private subnets which we have created for our virtual machines and the third one is a best in subnet so that we can connect to these virtual machines. So now let's create two virtual machines. I'll choose the same resource group. I'll name it as demo vm1. There is no requirement for specific redundancy. I'll give my name. We don't need inbound ports, we'll connect through the best in service. No requirement of any specific disk. Let's disable the public IP and, and, and let the NSG be basic. Our demo VM1 is created now. Let's connect it through the best in service. That's good, it's connecting now. Once it's connected, first thing I'll do is I'll disable the Internet Explorer and enhance security because, because it will block the website which we want to open, which is what is my ip.com. Let's go to the local server. I enhance security configuration. Let's disable it. Now open Internet Explorer and type in what is my IP.com. So this is the outbound public IP for the virtual machine. Though we don't have a public IP assigned to the virtual machine, but this is the IP which is provided by the Azure for all the outbound connections. Let's create another uh, VM. I'll name it as demo VM2. Same configuration. I'll make it as inbound ports as no. Select the another subnet and no public IP. Create. And let's wait for virtual machine to be created. Virtual machine is created now. Let's log into the virtual machine.
same way as we have done previously i'll disable the internet explorer and enhance security and then proceed with opening the website what is my ip.com as you can see these are two different public ips which are assigned to different vms however they are in the same virtual network so this means there is a pool of public ip addresses which are assigned to the vm for the outbound connection these public ip addresses keep on changing because these are randomly selected so it becomes difficult to add them into the firewall of another organization let's create a net gateway and assign to the first subnet so all the virtual machines in that subnet will use the static public ip of the net gateway same resource group i'll use i'll name it as demo net that is idle timeout i'll create a public ip address net ip i'll add it to demo subnet 1 and create so as you can see the ip address of the virtual machine 1 was 127241 and once the net gateway will be created this ip will change to the net gateway ip sorry for the wrong spelling of demo let's check the outbound ip It should be sixteen thirty one. Let's refresh this page. It comes sixteen thirty one. So now that means all the virtual machine in that particular subnet will use the same outbound IP address, and this IP address can be added to any firewall, which will allow the incoming traffic. So this is all for the NAT gateway. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe.